welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to your Easy for Game podcast. Now, there's a special episode where we're not discussing the news like usual. We're just discussing Destiny 2 Lightfall expansion as it's a hot topic right now. I wasn't actually going to do anything about it. I was just going to play the game. Uh, just in case everyone doesn't know, I play Destiny 2 all the time. But my normal content centers around pretty much gaming news, um, things that are happening in the media that we love. Uh, and it's centered around games, analyzing, and uh, pretty much talking it over with either a guest or it's just me. Um, but this time it's just Destiny 2, as I wanted to talk about the newest expansion, Lifefall, that of course dropped February 28th, a mere three days ago, uh, as you're watching this now. And the reason I wanted to talk about it is uh, it seems that everyone has some opinions on this being launched, and I really want to kind of dissect what I think about the, the actual uh, expansion. As I am a big Destiny 2 guy, I've been playing since launch. Uh, just in case you don't know, uh, I've been playing since D1. I am not a hardcore. I played it all the time. Uh, originally in D1, I would come for the expansions. Played a little bit here and there. Never really did raids. D2, I actually got serious around Forsaken. I still played D2 a little bit. Didn't play much of year one. But once Forsaken dropped, I did play kind of hardcore. And then... It goes on from there. Now, Lightfall. Destiny 2 Lightfall. The discussion that everyone wants to have on Reddit, Twitter, uh, leaks in these things are, are talking about, like, is this um, an actual story that came out? What was, what was, like, pushed? What was delayed? What was pushed forward from this? Et cetera, et cetera. So I want to quickly start before I get into what I thought about the game, it does seem to be the going theory right now between a couple, I would say, prominent leakers in the Destiny community and data miners and these things, that the actual Lightfall that we just played was, was cut up of something being delayed from last year. So Strand was apparently supposed to be in Witch Queen far as i understand um even like the motifs and design seems to hint that we were supposed to have strand and in the rumor ongoing rumor right now is that that was kicked to up everything to uh uh the light 3.0 service that we have right now in both solar void and arc so they pushed strand to do that for the year and then they put Strand in, in Lightfall, and apparently this was originally going to be the beginning cutscene of the final shape. Uh, but then they, I, I guess, had to make an excuse for this existing once they did that for Strand, because I guess they can't introduce it in the final shape. Maybe it doesn't make sense narratively, so bang, bang, boom. They had to kind of piece all this together, and then I guess the main uh, antagonist, Callus, was kind of the linchpin that would kind of hold everything together, that you could use him as a, a character to kind of um, round out this kind of expansion, give or take. Now, now that we have a little bit of the background there, obviously Bungie will never tell us any of this. Um, so we'll never really probably know unless we have a substantial report from one of the two gaming journalists that we have. Because uh, we don't have that many. <laughs> um, and the ones we do have are probably arguing right now uh, if the JRPGs are racist or not. Um, the term, in, anyways. But no, that's important. That's not why you clicked on the video. You wanted to, you clicked on the video to hear about Destiny 2. So let's talk about that. Now, I played Lightfall. I was hyped, by the way, for this. Um, very hyped, very excited, just like everyone else. That, that was pretty much the sentiment going in to this expansion, I think, is pretty easily said, right? Everyone was excited. Strand looked cool. Um, I primarily play as a Titan, so I definitely was not like super amped to have yet another thing where I could hit a button and run around and hit things because none of them are really that viable in endgame content. So I'm, I'm always the guy that's like, I, I want to be able to live when I'm playing har harder things. So I didn't really care about this. But beside the point, I was so excited for the other thing. And it launches. I like the setup, all these things, but. Destiny 2 Lightfall launches. I play day one. Finish it day one. Finish it. Uh, it took me seven hours, maybe a little less, maybe a little more. Um, 
I had to like cut it up in like two play sessions, but that's I beat it this the day of. And I left pretty negative. Uh shocker. I was actually shocked to see other people agreed with me. I thought I thought I'd kind of be the odd man out. I thought people would just like this. Um, because people seemed excited for Strand, and I never was really super excited, so I thought I'd be like the guy that's like, oh. I didn't like it, but I'm not shocked if other people liked it. And it seems that everyone is kind of in agreement. Kind of that this was at least. At bare minimum, not as good as Witch Queen. I think everyone pretty much agrees with that. And at the most, it is a great disappointment to a lot of people. Now, I want to give my perspective and then we'll go into the general thought that I found throughout kind of the community in quotes for Destiny 2 now. I, throughout playing Lightfall, I did come to the, so first off, actually, let's start from actually the beginning, kind of, let's go like, kind of chronologically with this. The game opening, pretty strong. I liked it. I, at first, I was very up and enjoying it. We get the first taste of Tormentors. That was really cool. That was very scary to see them. I'm like, oh, these, uh, I don't know if this was supposed to happen or if I assume it is, but I, it, I started the match by getting grabbed, which was very cool. You, you know, that set piece that they showed off that that the Tormenta like like void damages you like really close up. That was really cool. So that is how I met a Tormentor. So that was really cool. That was a little set piece I got to experience just by myself. I don't know if that's like meant to happen. I don't think it is because I've replayed the campaign and then it happened the second time. But when I got past that, uh, I quickly found out that Tormentors are not that scary. If A, you can freeze them. It's way too easy to freeze in this game. So like if you just freeze it, you kill it very easily with the heavy weapon. Um, or uh, you just light blade it. And if you know what that means, you kite him. So you just kite him around an arena. And he can't really do much if he's not enraged with his little scythe attack that he runs at you with. So that was quickly eliminated as anything that was really cool. They are aesthetically cool. I do like fighting them. But to me, it is not a. That is, they are not as cool as I went in, but I actually prefer Hive Guardians uh, to them. I think that's way, way cooler and actually one more difficult to fight than this thing that I can pretty much kite like the Light Blade boss or I just freeze him and he can't do anything to me. Uh, beside the point, let's talk about the overall narrative because I like Destiny and I like the narrative, although they tend to like to hide the narrative a lot of time, kind of similar to Elden Ring, but not as uh, well done, I'd say. So. The hot topic is, of course, the veil, right? <laughs> what is it? Uh, I'm not here to tell you what it is. Um, I'm sure if you are watching this video, you have heard or at least have watched My Name is Bife before or you've already watched this video about it. Uh, I have not seen it yet. I do want to watch it because uh, I do like his content, but. Uh, I, I have garnered that even he does not know what the veil is. And if he doesn't know. I don't have a shot in hell of knowing what it is, so. I thought that was incredibly weak. Um, there's this MacGuffin that we need to stop happening. And it keeps we keep kind of stopping it, but also kind of not because we're failing a lot, especially in the. Uh, Mission where Kalos, or sorry, not Kalos, Ka Ka Kaido saves us. So, like, we're winning but losing a lot, but we're still winning. Um, by the way, this entire motif was our end begins. Um, at no point was I like, wow, this is really dark. I'm really scared of, for the future. Uh, at no point was I at all worried <laughs> about that. Um, so that motto to me is mute. Um, of course, spoilers for the game. I should have said that at the opening, but quick spoilers for the end. Um, even the ending is not very our end begins feeling. Uh, of course, the witness um, cuts open uh, a part of the traveler and then transports himself and some pyramids into it. Uh, and then it ends. So, I mean, I guess that's bad, but we don't know what it even happened. Like, did we already lose? I imagine we didn't because we have another expansion to happen. This was definitely not the Thanos snap uh, for Destiny, uh, where it really did feel like 
all is lost. This just kind of went like, oh, I wonder what's going to happen with that because we're not going in there. So I guess this is whatever. I do want to quickly uh, discuss that the very popular thing is going around that uh, the, the cutscene for for both the beginning and the end of the this campaign is w meant to be one cutscene that opens the final shape. Um, yeah, I agree. It definitely looks like that. Uh, I think it's wild if you don't think that's what that was, uh, because it's clearly it was clearly meant to not be here. Uh, the way it's shot, the way it's edited, the way it's spliced together. I mean, if you put the two cutscenes together, they you work the exact same way. So, so what Bungie wants us to believe is that we open Destiny Two campaign, we get attacked, all the Darkness ships attacks the Traveler, right? The witness goes up, gets shot with the, the life laser. Walks up, st stops it from doing that by communing. I'm assuming witness drinks light. You know, the, of course, the vow raid tells us call this kind of. And then he goes to commune with it or whatever. He looks behind him, says, Callus, this is my disciple. You know what to do. He bows out. Callus is like, yes, daddy, I got you. Goes, leaves. Goes to Neomuna. And but the way we get there is, of course, jumping on the ship, which I'm like, all right, um, maybe we could have found a better way of doing that. Oh, OK, we'll stow away and we'll get we get there this way. Um, cut to Neomuna. Uh, we're there. We're like, oh, my God, there's a city here. Every everything that happens in that campaign happens on, on Neomuna, right? We meet the Cloud Stratters. Um, uh, all, all that happens, Rowan dies, blah, 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 et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Everything happens. The cloud arc gets attacked. You know, we say thing. We go to the end. We fight Callus. Uh, our ghost gets captured, which I'm coming back to all this, by the way, because I can't believe half the things I'm saying. And they just kind of glossed over. Our ghost gets <laughs> gets. Taken over, goes up to the veil, does something to it. All we're told is it has light just like the Traveler, which I'm like, OK, that's a big deal. Don't touch that. We don't touch that at all. We don't even discuss why that's a big deal. We don't discuss if it's a big deal at all. If you don't know anything about Destiny, you're like, oh, well, that's weird, probably. But at the end of the day, you're probably like, who cares? Ghost goes up. I'm assuming the witness is communing, which I guess he could just do this. And we've never had figured out a way to not let this happen uh, because this has happened, I believe, since Shadowkeep. Uh, that the witness can just the darkness can just take it over and do it and do what he wants with it. So maybe we should have found a way to make that not happen. But hey, I, I guess we just ignored that and kind of hoped it wouldn't happen again. Ghost goes up, communes darkness or with the light, with the veil. The witness gets whatever he needs done, which now he has the power to open the traveler up like some sort of shish kebab esque thing. Opens it up, transports everything inside, boom, end of campaign. Now, what I didn't say is this cutscene opens when we go back to the witness with the blast doors on the helm opening in our main um, kind of characters of Destiny that I'd say, other than the character that you play as, is all sitting there staring at the witness. So we're we're led to believe that in the span of the blast doors closing, those five people, I think it's five, it might be four, those five people standing there, all of this expansion happens. I guess they stand there while there's a, I mean, a god, pretty much, miles away from them. And then they just stand there in the exact same spot. We cut back to them. The blast doors open. They then see him open it up, go in. So. Admittedly, very weak. And it does kind of seem that the prevailing has at least some sort of truth to it, right? There's at least something there when there's smoke, there's fire, right? It's a little weird that these two cutscenes that are at the beginning and end of the game can be put together and it works cohesively as one thing. Very weird. Don't know what that's about. I will never know. Bungie will never tell us uh, why this happened. Maybe it was COVID. I'm, I'm sure everyone's 
tired of hearing that excuse, but that that's what it is. I will say very interesting. No offense to Bungie. No offense. I love them. I love their products. Do find it strange that this happened and a bunch of their employees are bragging that they made all of this in COVID, uh, where <laughs> now looking back on it, I'm like, oh, you did make all this on COVID, huh? This isn't up to snuff to the Witch Queen stuff, which would have mainly been finished pre-COVID and was and was probably topped off as COVID was ongoing. So, Lifefall maybe was affected by this, and then the final shape happened. I'm not really sure. The timeline gets very messy, uh, because originally, I want to say Lightfall was meant to kind of subtly be the end, and then they announced the final shape, and I'm like, no, this is the end. Maybe they saw dollar signs and were like, hey, we can stretch this out or something catastrophically wrong happened. And then they had to add another year to this. We don't really know. Um, I usually say the dollar is king in these kind of things. Occam Razor suggests that when money is involved, uh, that is going to be the one that kind of prevails, right? I know that's what not Occam Razor is mean, but I think money will skew our decision making a bit. Uh, especially when we're trying to hypothesize things that are happening uh, that we will never know. Now, Lightfall. Now that we covered that this weird kind of thing was split up and might have never been an expansion, but was like cut from Witch Queen, so they had to like introduce Strand in a narrative and a news place. Whatever. Let's just move on from that and just talk about straight how is this expansion? This expansion was not very good. The Witch Queen, coming off of Witch Queen, I was, I was like, Bungie's got it down packed. They are going to nail these last two expansions. We're going to have an Infinity War. It's going to be awesome. It's way overused to say we're going to have an Infinity War, by the way. We should stop saying that because it's getting old and we, not, and we should not strive for that in other medium because um, it's just not the same thing. But for... Brevity's sake, we'll say that'll be our Infinity War, our Lightfall, the end happens, we're all scared for Final Shape. Uh, at no point did I ever feel that. Uh, n at no point was I ever scared for anyone happening. Uh, this condensed story was way, way too, way too condensed. Um, the characters that we meet along the way are not developed really at all, at least in the main campaign. I like actually uh, Nimbus and uh, Rowan quite a bit um rowan we're don't we don't actually get to know at all they just kill him immediately um and by the way uh he might as well had i'm going to die later uh tattooed on his forehead did i think he would die three missions later i think it's three it might be four uh no i didn't i definitely thought they would have him do a grand grand ending at, at, at the very end that maybe helps us stop something happening and and, and maybe or maybe his, his sacrifice is in vain. And at the end, he sacrifices himself to stop the communion. And in that effort, he we think it ends. But no, not really. Yeah. Uh, who knows? But I will say this. This was clearly rushed. Uh, they clearly did not have enough time uh, to really get a cohesive narrative going. I think it's clear that Bungie doesn't really know how to do both storytelling and introducing a subclass or a new power or something. I think that's kind of kind of obvious now. We kind of had this similar situation with Beyond Light where we meet... Um, oh my god. Aramis. We meet Aramis. There's this whole thing. She has this cool backstory in lore. You fight her. You don't really care about what's going on. You barely, I, I mean, at least I did. I barely understand why I care about anything that's happening. So there's just ran. Oh, my puppy's in the, in the back there. Oops, sorry, I covered her. There she is. And her name's Freya. She's very pretty. So we barely understood what was happening. We're learning stasis, which stasis very similar to, to how they did with Strand, where they kind of like tease you throughout the whole campaign like look how strong you are with this thing here's like 70 melees and like excuse me infinite super and stuff that you can use and it's like all right cool it, it we're too strong to do this effectively so i understand you have to give it to us super powered to make it feel good but that means the when you actually get strand it's not going to feel as good because we're used to being god mode with it 
Now, when you separate those two things, um, in, and at least in your head, you're like, you know, that was a fun thing. I know that's not actually how it's supposed to perform. So how does it feel without any of those things? Well, uh, before today, they're actually going to time gate all the fragments to make this thing better. For some reason, they were going to do that again. They did that with Stasis. They were going to do it again, even though no one liked it. They were going to be like, yeah, we're going to time get it all again. They 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 thank thankfully stopped that. And they said um, in the uh, squad um, on the second, which is uh, today as of recording, that they will unlock all the strands for uh, all the fragments. So you'll be able to buy them um, independently. So I'm like, all right, cool. That's a good step. Uh, because you should have never done this in the first place. I understand you want to have something behind the world's first thing. It only, I, I feel like it doesn't really make sense when we do that. It just seems like you're time gating something just to do it. Um, uh, they did that with one of the, uh, with, with the King's Fall raid too, if I remember right. Like they're like, oh, new fragments will drop. And it's like, why? It feels like you're just doing this. Like at least for Stasis, it kind of felt like there was a reason. But now you're just like, ah, it's, it just is. Nothing's happening in the world that affects this, so like, but it's just happening. So, thankfully, that's over with. Um, I have not been able to get on, so I do not know if if I have it like right now. Like, is there still stuff locked behind worlds first? Which I'm fine with. It's not a big deal. It's just man, this is annoying. Now, all that being said, the introductory of Strand was incredibly weak, especially if you are familiar with the Light 3.0 system, uh, because we're just way too strong. So it's just anytime I was given strand when I was on my Void Titan, by the way, I was playing on Legendary solo, not with anyone else. So um, and I did find it kind of easy, especially compared to Witch Queen, Witch Queen was a bit more difficult, I feel like, than this. I kind of steamrolled this game, if I'm being honest. But um, uh, doing doing the uh, campaign as a Void Titan, I had my build all set. So like when I would grab strand, I'm like, oh, my God, I, this doesn't feel as good because I don't have cohesiveness with this, right, with my Titan. I, I can throw a barricade and grab a, 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 a void overshield to heal. I can have devour on like infinitely as long as I'm killing things. Like there's this scenarios like that where it's just very strange when you're given strand and you're meant to feel cool, but you're on legendary. So it's kind of hard. So like you're you're ha you're having to grapple with like, oh, I can be very strong. Oh, and also I need to do strand, which I'm like, I am strong, but also like I'm way stronger with my other things because I can heal infinitely. So it, there's kind of a disconnect with those two things. And also none of your none of your alt mods are going to be on while you're using strand because they're all connected to. Oh, that puppy's upset. Hold on. <laughs> Give me one second. Let me let it out. Oh, sorry about that. My puppy wanted to uh, get out. So uh, anyways, back to what I was saying. Um, uh, You don't have like cohesion with strand when you have it active. So when I'm using a void Titan, and I feel very strong getting devour and making all these orbs of power. I'm getting my super back all the time. I'm I, I'm like training my abilities and I use strand and I'm like, OK, um, not getting that many orbs, but at least I'm super powered. But as you're going on in the campaign, you're getting less and less overpowered with it. So by the time you're fighting Kalos with it, it's just a regular class and you don't feel nearly as cool because you don't have fragments on and you don't have a build made proportionately with strand in mind you have a build made for void in mind or whatever class you used so there's a give and take with how they approach this i do think at the end of the day it just didn't work i think you need to have more semi set piece moments or have two missions set aside where you spend all of that time learning strand uh and you get very intimate with it versus like you find it like once every mission and you're like you, you use it and you like you get overpowered and you're like running around slash and stuff. It just doesn't work because it feels like you're teasing and you want to use the new thing. And I don't know. I, I surprised they made the pretty much the exact same mistake they did in Beyond Light. And I feel like. I feel like the messaging was very clear that no one liked how that was rolled out. No one liked how it was used in the campaign. People barely liked the campaign, too. Um, I will say. I'm sounding very negative on this. This is still the second best uh, expansion in Destiny history. Uh, and uh, it's not even close, if I'm being honest. I know people like taking King and these things. I don't I, I could maybe put that as two, maybe three. But um, they don't they, the narrative. It hasn't been very good for a long, long time. So 
wherever they were good at, it just wasn't good enough to really like be that good. You're we're always coming back for the gameplay, right? So like it can only be so good if you're not being able to tie those team those two things together well. All right, D1 was a a a mess pretty much, right? It was a very good narratively. It was kind of goofy writing. Um, and I would say this is kind of similar for most of the expansions. Taken King was pre- was very good, of course. Um, but th- they're kind of known for doing this, and Witch Queen was the only one that really kind of turned us all uh, around because it, it we weren't honestly, and this sounds mean, we weren't used to that good writing and that good setup and pacing and uh design and, and not design that's not fair um their design has always been really good the, mainly the design um the weapons and design and all that has always been good but the narrative has always been lacking the antagonists have always been lacking i'll be honest the acting has always been lacking as well like they're not they're not coming out with emmys when they're doing these things right they're not winning vgas for performances right not they're no one's really great when they're doing these so a couple of times they do fall short uh, in a lot of departments. So Witch Queen, unfortunately, and I'm, I think I'm actually going to title it, it, it might have been a fluke. Uh, it might have been kind of a pie in the sky thing that, that happened and like they were able to make magic once and that was it. I don't know. I'm not saying I don't have confidence that this team can't bring it together, but the same people who made Witch Queen made this, right? So I don't know. I really do hope I'm wrong with that, but I, but I, I am a little worried now. I'm worried that that is the final shape going to be good. I don't know. I hope so. But I can't say I'm 100 percent certain anymore because I thought this was I thought this was sure fire. We're going to be good. I was already on board with Cloud Striders. They looked really cool. Um, And this is actually a perfect time to get into Cloud Striders. Um, Cloud Striders were really cool. I liked Nimbus and Rohan at first. Um, Nimbus is like a flip of a coin. If he's going to say either the goofiest writing you've ever heard. Or he's going to say something like very swaggerish and, and appropriate for what he's doing. Right. People keep saying like, oh, no, he's like a teenager in these things. I'm like, why are we like we're not told that we're kind of have to assume. I literally read somewhere that people are making head cannons to justify why um, I did. I believe I did say he when I said Nimbus. I apologize. They are a they. Technically, so I apologize if I did. I don't I actually. I'm not sure if I referenced their gender or not, but they are a they. So let me see if I can keep track of that. Rowan is a he, so I might have mixed those two up. But anyways, the 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 character of Nimbus, right, uh, was at times grossly goofy writing. Like, and, and uh, there's one line that he was like, uh. He, I said he again. They were like, um, don't let it get to your uh, head, like the power of Strand, I think. He's like, don't let it get to your head. Unless you you can uh, like use this power to like take over Callus and let it go to your head, shoulders, knees, and toes. And I was like, oh, God, that wasn't very good. <laughs> like, I feel like everyone in the writing room were like, yeah, that's a banger. And, and I'm over here like, Eesh, that's not very good. But then Nimbus would have great scenes. Uh, uh, like scattered throughout that I would hear and it'd be like, yeah, I do kind of feel that energy of like a, uh, of like almost like a Spider-Man esque character where like you're very young and brash, but you, you, you kind of have a certain, um, you, you have like a good heart. Maybe not kind of like Naruto in these things, right? He's not, he knows for his wisdom, but, but he has a good heart and he's always pointed the right direction. Whereas Nimbus's character, they just, we're just kind of meant to kind of, assume what's going on right we're never told that ronin's the old guy that's grizzled and he's gonna he's two days from retirement baby and uh the only difference is their retirement is death but he you know oh i'm two days away from retirement i'm gonna go drink my my ties in uh on, on like in florida for the rest of my life and of course this is like the rookie cop who's coming and he's and they're gonna uh make a name for themselves and they're brash but they got a good heart and and at no point where we're actually told that we're just shown the first cut scene with them too. And that's their dynamic. And we're supposed to just be like, all right, I've seen this before. I've seen that dynamic. I'll piece together what's going on. And I'll just go from there where as no offense, that's not very good storytelling. We're supposed to be introduced to the characters fluidly and um, dynamically throughout the story. We're, uh, and we're not supposed to just piece them together on our own. 
um, uh, and since we're uh, since I'm on Cloud Stratus, um, when the character Rowan died, and again he should have had tattooed on his forehead, "I will be dead very soon," and he dies so quickly, you don't even get attached to him. During the scene that this is happening, I actually was so frustrated because I, I. By the way, again, I'm reading a mile away. I'm like, he is dying here. I I know. I get it, Bungie. Stop screaming that he's going to die. I understand what you're doing. Right. So he comes in, sacrifices himself to save everyone. I'm like, cool, whatever. But I was I was up. What made me upset is we didn't have enough time to be attached to him. So what is it? Why? Why? Why waste a good opportunity to get us more attached with that character? And then just boom, it's gone. It's over. We we killed them like three missions later. You never really got to talk with them. You never really learned about them. You learn about them a bit later, which I'll, uh, I'll cover in a second. That I actually really like, but that's not until after the fact. So like, I don't care. Now he's, he's, he's you know, no offense, he's gone. So, so I, I don't care. But, um, uh, and then God, uh, Nimbus's character in the next mission, it doesn't even seem affected by their mentor's death. They just kind of like, oh, yeah, he's dead. I got to, like, live up to his ideals. Anyway, <laughs> like that's what it felt like. It doesn't even feel like uh, the character of um, of Nimbus was very much affected by it. And again i think it just goes back to just like the poor writing and the and and the rushed element to these things and and i don't know i i, I find myself kind of baffled that that this kind of happened I, I don't know what's going on maybe it's just they had too much going on because as we mentioned prior and i haven't even touched on callus by the way i've talked about strand i've talked about the cloud striders which again they're the cloud striders are very cool and i do like they did get kind of creative with um the people that are living on Neptune, they have to live in the cloud arc. That's pretty much the cloud. And they have to like, that's where their bodies are. And they're like uploaded in a database and they, they're able to rock, walk around in like these virtual forms. Like, look, I'm beyond, uh, we all know, obviously it's a cop out to not have real people walking around, obviously, but they at least got creative. And actually I like the reason a lot. It's very creative. I think it's very cool. Um, but but that is the reason. It doesn't make it bad, but they did need a reason why there can't be people around. Uh, and that's the reason. <laughs> they take TK can't they can't just have NPCs walking around in this world. It's just it's gonna be out of place and uh we, we can shoot them in the head and these things that I don't think they want that. So um uh but but like I said, uh, last thoughts on the cloud strategy. Very cool. The actual after the campaign stuff, and actually again, I, I liked Nimbus randomly. They were very cool in some right, some scenes, and they were cringy as f in other scenes. I actually like what they did at the end of the campaign. I I, I kind of like was like, oh yeah, you know, we're kind of. I do feel like we're driving here, and I do like that. Um, let's be honest, he, he, they are the most compelling, um, vendor, I guess, in the game to me at least. Uh, that's not saying much because n not a lot of people are like super convenient, you know, it, it, and I mean, world vendors. I did like Finch, but like he, he wasn't like, I mean, he was narratively important, but like, he's not as narratively important as, as, uh, as I would say Nimbus kind of feels being in the environment. I don't know. That's not fair. Um, Finch was pretty cool. I think I'm dogging on Finch too much. He is pretty good. Anyways, um, uh, that was my last piece on Cloud Striders. I do think they're very good. Nimbus's writing is all over the place from great to pretty bad to like kind of cringy to like, OK, um, I did love the mission with to get the machine gun that used to be Rowan's uh, Rohan's. Um, that is the best look at that character. And we're actually crazy, crazy thing here. We're actually seeing them get affected by the loss of their mentor. Crazy that that's going to be the best part of, of the thing. Why was that not in the campaign? I'd, I I lost for words. Lost for words. Why that was not included in the campaign. Some of the best writing they had in the whole expansion is a side quest. Oh, anyways, let's let's um, I want to actually quickly touch on the pacing in this. I've actually seen a couple people who aren't hardcore into Destiny, kind of the pundits of the industry, I'd say, or, you know, kind of, 
not like content creators or anything, but the less serious Destiny players coming back to check out Lightbolt. And they're bowing out because for some reason, and they did it again. I can't believe they still do this. They made you grind halfway through the campaign because you wouldn't be high enough. What are you? Why are you doing this? Why do you keep doing this, Bungie? Please stop. <laughs> like, why do I have to do patrols to level up? Why do I have to do these things? I understand you're milking me for playtime, but at least make me do something that is a little more exciting than that. I don't like doing patrols. I don't like grinding like the mats and the, the treasure and these things. So it's like w you knew you'd lose people with that. So why did you keep it in? I really don't get it. Wh why? I already saw a, a couple of people. I know they're older, of course. So it's it, I'm not shocked, but they're like, hey, yeah, I went to play. I was having fun. But then they said I have to go grind these things to play. And I just I didn't want to do it anymore. And I'm like, yeah, no shit. Like, I, like they don't want to do that. So why did they? I can't. I, I know. Again, I know the reason is playtime. But why? <laughs> it's just to add another 30 minutes because they don't want to say that the, the time to beat the expansion is six hours or whatever. Sure, whatever. I don't really I think that argument is very old. I don't think anyone really cares anymore. But hey, maybe Bungie has some stats that says it otherwise. I don't know. But they I thought they were done with this. And clearly they're not. Clearly they're not. They keep doing it. Now. Major plot points, right? We've covered quite a bit of them. Let's let's talk about Kyle's. Let's talk about this guy. So Kalos, of course, known for a very long time, ever since the D D2 launch. We've known about Kalos. He was the original um, raid. And he's a pretty compelling character. He's kind of like this guy that uh, was exiled from his people uh, for various reasons. I'll let you read uh, the lore on him. And, and he discovers the voice in the darkness, which was the witness at the time, I believe. Uh, and he's pretty much shown the final shape of the universe is nothingness or, you know, pretty much at that point and everything will be dead. And he's like, oh, Jesus. All right. Well, I'm just going to party and 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 uh, get drunk until that happens. And that's what he does. It's pretty much what he does. Um, it's a little more complicated. I'm sure Lord Daddy's out there like by for kind of like they have like an itch in their eyebrow and they're like, what's going on? And, like someone's describing the lore wrong. But. You know, that's that's like a layman's understanding of of the situation. Now, let's push push forward on that. Right. We come to Callus now. Right. He is a member of the disciple. Right. He is a disciple of the witness. He has pledged his allegiance to him pretty much out of pretty much out of fear. It seems to me, at least. And we have had this. <laughs> this is arguably this is, in my opinion, the most the best and worst part of this whole expansion centers around Kid the Callus character. Now, any time that Callus and the Witness are on screen is some of the coolest stuff ever, right? Callus talks to the Witness and it looks like reality is shattering. So the Witness can like talk to him and he just says my disciple or like whatever and it's very cool and the Witness it just looks very cool and and he's just like rapport. Like he never says many words but he's still very intimidating. Alice is clearly intimidated by him and all these very, very cool things. Every time they're on screen, I'm I'm glue, glued, glued to whatever's happening. The acting uh, is actually very good from Callus there. Um, I, I, I don't know why, but I really love the lines like my my semblances matches my inner beauty. Like that. That's very I don't know. why I really like that. And again, the witness shattering reality and like kind of walking up and talking to him like very gently, like he's not being crazy, but he's just being firm. It's very compelling. Very compelling. We don't we we get some uh, shit talking with Callus throughout the campaign a little bit. I love when he comes as a giant head and comes in. And he's like, uh, God, yeah, and like he's messing with. He's like, I don't have riches for you this time. And these things. Very cool. Uh, and the character of Kaito shows up in this campaign. One of my favorite characters, actually, in all of Destinies, is in Kaito. Kaito, of course, the daughter of Callus, 
right? One of the biggest relationships in Destiny 2, right? Between these two people, right? We've already built up this kind of relationship before in this uh, little dungeon you might have played called Duality, where you go inside Callus's mind and, and, and go through his uh, memories and nightmares and these things. <laughs> and you play the campaign and you fight Callus, right? He's, of course, the main bad guy. Very cool fight. Pretty basic arena, but I did th I did like the fight. I, I liked it. I, I, I did find it semi challenging uh, because um, they just kept spawning enemies. So you did have to get creative. Um, the first time I did it, I ignored the Timur. <laughs> Excuse me. I ignored the tormentors and then I was pushed in the middle of the arena and then two tormentors and cows were fighting me. And I was like, oh, this is going to suck. Uh, so I, I died my first time. My second time I, I did it. No problem. Because I just killed the tormentors. And I'm honestly that scary. But. Once I did that, you know, smooth sailing. OK, I do all that, right? We kill, we kill cows. And that is my main crux of the issue. We kill Callus. Why do we kill Callus? The only interaction that Callus and Kylo have is like the third mission. The third mission where Kylo saves us. Why is that? the most compelling two characters that we have in this expansion. And we don't even see them interact. I, this is something I actually have not seen anyone angry about. And I'm shocked. Am I the only one that cares? Am I the only one that cared that the, the, the daughter of the main antagonist did not interact? I thought that was insane. I, I literally couldn't believe it. I was like, well, when I was fighting him, I was like, okay, well, I assume like, well, we'll he'll like we'll hurt him. And he gets on one knee and, and then Kaido comes in. And, and, and uh, by the way, we had that, I mean, amazing fight earlier, right outside of the, of, of, uh, of his uh, flagship with Kaido, with this massive waves coming out at you. These very compelling waves. You're, it, it, it really felt like a long time. Like we were fighting for a very long time. And that was cool. It, it felt like a war. It felt like a battle of a war. We were fighting. Kaido was with us. We were destroying all the Shadow Legions together. That arguably is the best part of the entire campaign. Um, uh, outside of the rocky montage we got with Strand. Which is a whole other thing we can talk about later. But we set all this up, right? We 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 kind of bring up Kaido and Kalos's relationship in the past, and we have zero, zero. I mean, just zero in interaction. What? Why? I just want to know why. Why did we not have a single? I want maybe Kaido shouldn't have killed him, but I wanted her to be there when he died or passed away. We tell Kaido that her father's dead on a phone call with our ghost. What? That's what? Like, that was the craziest part to me and the most missed opportunity in all of the campaign, in all this expansion. I think that's going to go down in one of my biggest disappointments, maybe in Destiny, is not seeing those two kids interact at all outside of Kaido giving us a rundown on who Callus is in the first place for people who haven't played the game before. So that's kind of like the biggest interaction we get out of them. She's recounting her father's legacy. I'm like, all right, cool. I don't see one of my favorite characters interact with their father as they're dying. What? It's just crazy. It's just crazy. And I, and maybe I'm alone here. Let me know if, if people are disagreeing with what I'm saying here about Idol and Callus just straight up, just, just straight up, not talk like just, just as if as if they just weren't in the game. This is crazy. I I I, I had a loss for words. I haven't been able to talk about anyone about this because uh, a lot of my friends, um, if they have been, and I just haven't had time to discuss it with them. So I, I don't have anyone else's opinions other than my own to discuss on this matter. But that's just the one thing that I've heard no one upset about. And that's that's my main gripe. I wanted them to have some sort of interaction. And I really think that's going to go down as like one of the biggest disappointments for me is 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 just them being like, yeah, we don't need to write any cool dialogue between them two. They they had their thing. You know, we watched their duality. A talk is fine. And they reference each other. Daughter, traitor. 
to to her and and that and that was it. That was her last conversation. It's like, all right, whatever, whatever. Final thoughts. Final thoughts. Um, I don't think I have much to close on, really. I just wanted to give my thoughts to the internet, uh. As I I wear my Destiny Love on my T-shirt every time I do a podcast, anytime I'm doing what you've been playing, I've I'm it's always Destiny. Even if it's not said, people can infer. Generally, I've turned Destiny on to do something, and um, this is something I'm passionate about, and this is something I just want to discuss. As I gave them massive props for Witch Queen, so I must give them massive criticisms when it deserves it. And this was, uh, at least to me, a, a Pretty big disappointment. Um, but it is still good, I would say, though. Uh, and this is, I guess, what I'll end on. Um, everything I just said, right? Everything I just went through on how much that Nimbus's character was both great and bad. Uh, the Rowan character was quickly killed off before we pretty much learned anything about him. I don't even know his color, favorite color. I, I I don't even know what his favorite color is. His food, his favorite. What I don't, I don't know. know nothing about. It. But we were supposed to care that he died. Uh, the veil storyline, which went nowhere. I mean, I everyone has said that. I don't think anyone disagrees. The veil went nowhere. It might as well have been called a MacGuffin. It just just skip all the bullshit. We just call it MacGuffin. That's what you want. We want it because we said so. <laughs> literally the reason we want to stop it is because the witness wants it and that's that was good enough for us we're, we're just gonna we're just gonna stop it we don't even know what it is we don't know how to we don't even know how to stop it how do we stop it if we don't know what it is whatever um and also if we i guess if we really thought about it if he had to commune and he could control our ghost then the worst thing that we could do is us go there but what do we know All these being said, all these negatives being said, everything I just said that how much I didn't like this, I didn't like that, and like this, blah, blah blah blah. Right? I want to make sure I end on my positives and what I thought overall of of the expansion. Both so positives, the guns are always great. The gunplay is always great. The new mod system, albeit incredibly, incredibly dumbed down. I mean, this thing is like five five year old can make a build now, um, which is I think good. By the way, I want to be clear about that. It's good that it's been dumbed down to the point. It's just there's not much complexity anymore. You can't get creative with a firepower build um, focused on elemental shards and stasis and, and uh, funneling your grenade over and over again. You can't do that anymore. But what you can do is you can have armor charge on and you can boost like your restoration stat. So your recovery is higher and that's just easier in, in, you know, whatever. The mod system, although so early, seems to be completely dumbed down to a point where you can, anyone can make a build, and although you're not going to feel very special when you find a cool build, you at least feel competent in most uh, gameplay situations. Because you can, most people will be like, oh, I need more grenades in this build, so I'll put on Grenade Kickstart. And I need to make sure I make more orbs, so I'll put on Void Siphon to siphon more orbs. Yeah. It's, it's easy so uh you had to sacrifice one for the other i guess and that's what they went with and it's fine loadouts are awesome no you know nothing to add there uh accommodation system is broken right now i think i'm rec I, I can receive accommodations i can give them but i can't look at them because the game just crashes if you if you could so it's completely broken it doesn't even work um a lot of things are kind of broken at and launch but of course it's foreseen it's just pretty strange that we're still in that area it's like damn this much stuff is broken like uh, i read the twab today and there's an entire like cvs receipt of things that were like known issues <laughs> like all these things i'm like i'm curious how much of this were known shippables i'm you uh, the bungie is very competent studio they're very very smart i'm sure they knew most if not all of these things were borked at some point um final thoughts and the positives right this was still good. And I said that mid partway through this video. This is still a good expansion. I want to be clear about that. This is still a great expansion. I know everyone's like, what? You just shit on this for 49 minutes. And you're like, oh, it's still good. But it is. It is still good. But the reason I am so hard on it is because the Witch Queen was one of the best expansions of an online game I've ever played. 
So uh, we expected it to be better, and it wasn't. And that's why so many people are disappointed and upset. And it's clearly not finished. I mean, that I think that's his base is going to get. The story was just not... It just wasn't put together well. Um, yeah, I, that's all I guess I have to say. Um, uh, final thoughts, Going, uh, leaving everyone. Um, Destiny 2 is still in a good spot. I don't regret spending money on this at all. Uh, Destiny 2 is just a great video game. I actually buy the um, edition that gives you like all the seasons or whatever. Uh, just because like I know I would I want the ability to come back at any time. So like this isn't me like crying and being like, oh my god, it's it's over, Destiny's dead, or or this isn't the worst thing ever, or any nothing like that. It's just I was incredibly disappointed because the Witch Queen was that good. And we just I would have been happy with the, the same amount of quality, or maybe just a little bit worse. I would have been fine with that probably too, because we're so I mean, honestly, we're just so used to the story expansions being bad. I, is there someone out there that thinks these story expansions are great? That's why we were so excited after Witch Queen, like how great it was. It was incredible. And we come to this. We don't see Sabathun the entire time. We barely understand who the Cloud Striders are. We don't know what the veil is. There's no uh, build up to um, uh, why we care about like. Uh, the Vex invading. They just have been invading because we need more characters involved because we don't want you fighting Cabal the whole time, I guess. I don't know why they care about that now. They, they've done that in past seasons. So so they're like, we need a reason for the Vex to be there because they don't really do anything anymore. Um, But yeah, aside from all that, um, uh, a couple post campaign things are actually very good. The part, I think it's called Partition. Or, or partition it might be partition whatever that how, whatever that was is is awesome um i played that i think to do one of the memorial things to get um what is the exotic called the the stasis heavy exotic uh, winter's bite like you have to do a bunch of those things to like work up to get to that well doing all of that and working my way up and doing and learning about the Cloud Striders, learning about their lore, learning about this strategist, the first Cloud Strider, this mathematician, this war tactician. And the whole time I'm like, this is awesome. But why isn't this in the game? Why is it in, not an expansion? Why isn't this like a side quest? Why do we have the same like formatting that all the other expansions have? Why is there main quest? Go. You get one side kind of thing that boosts your level. Do that. Then after you're done with the expansion, there's like two quests. Some of them give you exotics. Some of them are they're just to grind things to up rotation, blah, blah, blah. But a lot of that was really good. Like I said, the the deterministic chaos, I think is what it's called. The, the void a machine gun. Very cool. Loved that mission quite a bit. I like that Nibis got to shine a, a bit more. Their their character, again, is good at some points. That character and the acting there. Awesome. Oh, that was great. Loved it. Wish we got more of that, though. I wish we got more of that. Um, I am still missing, of course, a, a good bit of uh, other things that are happening. Of course, we still have the raid coming in uh, just a few days. Um, this is March 2nd as of recording, so in, in less than a little more in the week. Uh, we'll see what the raid is. And the raid looks sick. We already saw a picture. Um, I did get spoiled with the exotic is, which I'm very upset. Very upset that that happened, but it's okay. Um, I, it's not like I would have figured out any other way than just seeing a picture of it, so it's not that big a deal. Um, but yeah, uh, I'm very excited. I'll see everyone when the raid launches. I'll be doing the world's first attempt. Uh, not not really being first, but uh, a day one clear. I guess I should, uh, is a better way of saying it. day one or day two clear. But um, yeah, thank everyone for listening this far in. Um, I'm glad I was able to kind of give you my thoughts on Lightfall. Uh, this was an inc again, Destiny 2 is an incredible game. That's why I'm so passionate about my criticisms as I want them to continue being good and I want them to make sure they have all their ducks in orders for the final shape because that's it. We have a new destiny after that. So let's end on a great note. Let's not end on a sour note. Thank you so much for listening to this podcast. And uh, remember, Easy Achievers, every single Friday, I love you. And go Chief.